Here's everything you might have missed in the Stranger Things 4 trailer. Something Stranger This Way Things? After what feels like an eternity, Netflix released our best look yet at Stranger Things Season 4. Set to arrive on an undisclosed date in 2022, the fourth season of Stranger Things looks poised to be the scariest one yet, based on the latest trailer. With Murder's Most Foul, Modern Day Mysteries, and clues about the origin of the Upside Down, the trailer takes us inside the Creel House. Released on Saturday as part of Netflix's To Dumb livestream event, the trailer takes us back in time to a simpler time in Hawkins, the 1950s. Of course, what follows is bad news bears for the past, present, and future of the small Indiana town. We're going to break down all the Easter eggs and hidden details that you might have missed in just a moment. However, if you want to go into this seeing less than Barb without her glasses, or me for that matter, leave now before you see something you shouldn't. <laughs> The trailer opens on the Creel family moving into the titular Creel house. That's convenient. Which seems like a lovely yet spooky home in the lovely yet spooky town of Hawkins, Indiana. In classic horror movie fashion, things are about to get real terrifying real quick for this family. They're being moved in by the Mayflower Moving Company. Except rather than pilgrims settling on land originally belonging to Native Americans, this family is instead settling on land that now belongs to the Mind Flayer. The father is a young Victor Creel, a character who will play an important role in Season 4. First announced in November 2020, we know that Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England, will join the show as Victor Creel, a man in a psychiatric hospital imprisoned for grisly murders he committed in the 1950s. The trailer is also set to the sweet strains of that old standard, Dream a Little Dream of Me, perhaps itself a nod to England's iconic role in Nightmare on Elm Street. As confirmed by a teaser featuring microfiche of a salacious newspaper story in the Weekly Watcher on the Stranger Things Twitter page, this flashback takes place in 1959 and the Creel House is about to be the scene of some horrific murders. The newspaper explains that prosecutors believe Creel killed his family, but he claims otherwise. There's a quote, presumably from Creel, that reads, I thought I was dying, so I'm flooded with relief, but there's a sense of terrible grief, too. Another headline reads, Killer or Tragic Victim of a Vengeful Spirit, hinting further at this possession story. Given that the current season takes place in 1986, that means it's 27 years later, which could be a reference to Stephen King's novel It, in which Pennywise the Clown returns to terrify and prey on the kids of Derry, Maine every 27 years. Coincidentally, It also came out in 1986, making this feel like a decidedly intentional reference. Except, rather than a dancing clown, we might see the Mind Flayer, or whatever entity possessed Victor Creel, returning to Hawkins to prey on the Hellfire Club. The Hellfire Club is what our heroes will evidently be calling themselves this season based on the previously released first episode title. The Creel family's suburban bliss is sadly short-lived, as we see Victor and his son start to notice strange electrical phenomenon. This echoes what we saw in Season 1, when Will Byers tried to communicate with his mom Joyce from the Upside Down. Here, though, the message is far less benign. The daughter walks down the stairs to find a dead rabbit. Sidebar, can Netflix shows stop showing us dead animals? I'm getting real tired of it. Happened in Midnight Mass, twice, way too many times, and now it happens in this. Netflix, lay off the animals. Anyway. The rabbit has been disemboweled, and the area around it is blighted, similar to what we saw happening in Meryl's pumpkin patch back in Season 2. More electrical phenomenon happen at dinner time, including radio interference, which we have seen several times in the series previously especially when a Demogorgon travels from the Upside Down into our world. Maybe that's what killed the poor little rabbit. Only time will tell. All I can say is, leave the rabbits alone. In the next shot, we see Victor Creel standing at the door, surrounded by the dead bodies of his two children. The imagery here feels evocative of the Grady twins in The Shining, but it also could be referencing another infamous murder house, the Amityville Horror. The Shining feels especially fitting, given how Jack Torrance is possessed by otherworldly entities and manipulated into murder, much like Victor Creel. Regardless, it's a shocking moment in the trailer and clear evidence that, much like how the Mind Flayer possessed Will Byers in Season 2 and Billy Hargrove in Season 3, here it is possessing Victor Creel to do its bidding in 1959. We hear static and the scene cuts to modern day. Well, modern day for this show. 1986. In the previous scene, everything was bright and colorful except for the stained glass window. Now everything is dusty, disused, and hidden in shadows except for the stained glass window. In a shot mirroring the Creel family arriving in the house, we see Steve breaking in to explore the murder mansion with Dustin, Lucas, Max, Nancy, and Robin. As the Duffer Brothers mentioned during the live livestream, the Creel house is a hugely important location this season, and given all the teaser trailer's emphasis on time and history, this increasingly seems like the origin point of the Upside Down in Hawkins. Perhaps the dimensional barrier is thinner here, or maybe it just marked the initial incursion point, but it will be one of the major mysteries of the season. 
Dustin drops his backpack on the floor and we can see his trusty walkie-talkie sticking out of the side of the bag. There are backup batteries for it strapped to the bottom of the bag, as well as a patch of a radio tower referencing Cerebro, the X-Men-inspired ham radio he built in Season 3. We also see a patch inspired by the NASA Meatball logo and a science -y patch referencing Somerset, Indiana 1985, which could reference Camp Nowhere, the science camp Dustin attended between Seasons 2 and 3. Last but not least, we have a Ghostbusters pin reading I've Been Slimed. Back in Season 2, we saw our heroes dress up as the Ghostbusters for Halloween, and now they're once again investigating something strange in their neighborhood. When Steve asks for clarification on the type of clues they're supposed to be looking for, we see the chandelier in the abandoned house light up, despite there being presumably no electricity. As we see a creepy-looking grandfather clock, Dustin quotes Sherlock Holmes from The Hound of the Baskervilles, a murder mystery involving what people believe to be a demonic dog. Here, though, rather than a demon dog, they're looking for evidence of a demo dog, and other upside-down weirdness. After that, we see the same grandfather clock ominously lit up in the center of the attic, flanked by a baby carriage and a wheelchair. When it strikes midnight, the clock is covered in tendrils, and we see the familiar debris of the Upside Down floating in the air as the glass covering the clock begins to crack. Clearly, time is going to play a major role this season, but does that mean time travel is in the cards for Stranger Things Season 4? Well, Michael Walsh has a theory about that over on Nerdist.com, which we'll link to in the description below. However, given the repeated clock imagery and all the teaser trailers thus far, this feels like it could be a countdown to history repeating itself all over again. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, though, when Stranger Things 4 drops in 2022. For now, though, tell us, what did you think of the latest Stranger Things trailer? What D&D monster do you think Season 4 will reference? Did you spot anything that we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned right here to Nerdist.com.